All processes that attract a payment will have a system-generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this tutorial on the application to rectify the register application process on the RDSASA platform. An application to rectify the register is a correction of the content of the land register. This application is initiated by an advocate on behalf of the applicant. For starters, you will open your browser of choice and type rdsasa.lands.go.ke. Once on the login page, key in your rdsasa ID or your national ID number as well as your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you will be provided with a one-time password code OTP which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and click Login. You will then be navigated to the dashboard where you will find a variety of services listed under the departments we have in the Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning. The account you are logged in with is your private account by default. For you to initiate this process, you will need to switch to your Advocate account. So go ahead and click on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an advocate. For more information on how to upgrade a professional account, check out our YouTube video through the link featured in the video description. On the landing page, navigate to the land registration services and click on view more. Here, you will find various services under the land registration department and the process we are applying for is rectification of a register. So go ahead and click on it. You will be directed to the applications page. And here, there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs, namely, Pending, Ongoing, Completed, Rejected, and Cancelled. The Pending tab is for the applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the rectification application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have completed and is up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to work on it. The completed tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. And the rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. The reasons for rejection will be communicated to the applicant. The cancel tab is for applications which have been cancelled by the different parties involved in the application process. All applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the level of processing of your application. Please note that if you have not switched roles, the new application button will be unavailable. On clicking the new application button, you will be navigated to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions specific to this application. You can go ahead and explore the FAQ to get an understanding of the application. Take a look at what are the grounds for rectification, who the actors are, and what are the details required for this application. If satisfied, click on Next. It is important to note that the payment required for this application is the registration fees, which is currently waived. As such, neither the advocate nor the proprietor will be asked at any stage to make any payments. If satisfied, click on Next. You will be navigated to the application details page. Here, you will first be required to fill in the applicant details, where you are required to enter the RDSASA ID of the applicant. Once you have entered the RDSASA ID of the applicant, click on Search. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the applicant. It can either be the applicant executing on his or her own behalf or an attorney executing on behalf of the applicant. If you choose the attorney option, will key in the power of attorney entry number in the format registry forward slash the entry number forward slash month of registration forward slash year and then click on search and the power of attorney entry number will be listed underneath the search bar along with his or her RDSASA ID. If the RDSASA ID does not feature, it means the attorney is not registered on RDSASA and thus you will also be required to enter the RDSASA ID of said attorney and then click on save. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the self option and then click on the save button. Upon doing so, the name of the applicant will be listed below 
and the name of the person executing on behalf of the applicant will be listed on the right. A key thing to note is that if you wish to change the applicant you picked for one reason or another, you can click on the Remove button and you can then enter the correct artisasa ID of the applicant. You will then fill the application details starting with the type of change. It can be the proprietorship section, encumbrance section or the ownership. Our application seeks to rectify the encumbrance section of the land register, so proceed and click on it. Next, you will be required to fill in the parcel details. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format registry forward slash block and then the block number with no space in between forward slash the parcel number. You will then enter the grounds for change and in our case it is a change in date for a charge entry. After you filled in the details, click on add grounds and the grounds for change request will be displayed on the right. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on add and the request will be listed below. If you wish to remove or edit the request, you can click on the remove or edit buttons and you can then enter the correct grounds for change. You can then proceed and click on next. The next section is the law firm details. Here, you need to impart the details of the law firm that you are acting under. You have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on Ardisasa, where you will be required to type in Ardisasa ID of the law firm and then click on search, and the law firm details will automatically be populated. However, in our case, you will be manually keying in the law firm details. To begin with, enter the name of the law firm. Also provide the physical address of the law firm, provide the postal address of the law firm, you will enter the phone number of the law firm and you will also enter the email address of the law firm. As far as the website as well as the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the information where applicable. You can then go ahead and click on next. You will be navigated to the documents page where you will upload the documents that you deem necessary. Kindly ensure you upload documents supporting this application, such as a copy of the title as mentioned earlier on the FAQ page. A key thing to note is that the document should be in either the format .pdf, .png or .jpeg. If you wish to upload a document, enter the name of the document and click on the Choose File button to upload a scanned copy of the document you wish to upload from your local machine or device, and the document will be listed on the right. If you are satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate the application process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the Verify Details page, with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. You also have the option of going back, if you need to edit any information. In this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click Yes. You'll then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been submitted successfully and then proceed and click on Close. At this point, the advocate and the proprietor will all get a notification on SMS as well as on email communicating that the rectification of register application process has been initiated. Subsequently, the advocate and the proprietor will also be notified to execute on the application with a signature and also confirm the representation. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. As mentioned earlier, the advocate was notified to confirm to represent the party listed. Therefore, the next thing is application verification, which is for the advocate to accept or reject representation for the party involved. So go ahead on the execution section and click on accept. Upon doing so, you will be prompted to approve on whether you want to represent the party. So proceed and click on accept. And the party involved will be notified that the advocate has accepted to represent him or her in the application process. The last part is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to append your signature. To begin with, there is this signing area here, as you can see, which allows you to sign with your computer mouse if you are using a desktop or a laptop, and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you are using a phone or tablet to access the platform. You also have the option of signing with another device, 
When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing options on RD Sasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the advocate will sign on the signing area. He or she will place the cursor on the blank space. Press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, he or she can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there's the option of removing it by clicking on clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. If satisfied with it, he or she will click on save. There's a pop-up notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as your signature. Click on yes and the signature status will change to signed. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the party involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. The application verification section shows the party involved hasn't verified the application. As such, once the proprietor has logged in, he or she will navigate to the notification panel on the left side of the screen and check for the notification prompting him or her to verify the application. An OTP prompt box will be displayed with a Get OTP button alongside it. It is important to note that below the OTP prompt box is a disclaimer for the party involved. It instructs him or her to only enter the OTP code if he or she authorizes the application made on his or her behalf by the advocate involved in the process. So if the individual is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to the phone number that he or she used during registration. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified, so he or she will go ahead and click on Close. Below the OTP verification section is the Add Signature section where he or she will be required to append the signature. So proceed to append your signature. And if satisfied, click on Save and affirm your signature by clicking Yes. And in doing so, the proprietor has completed the application by consenting to the application. In drawing things to a close, the remaining part is to surrender the current title. So once the advocate has logged in, a ticket and an invite will have automatically be created by the system in order to enable you to surrender the title. So go ahead and navigate to the My Appointments tab on the left panel of your screen. You'll see an invite that has been created. Click on View and you'll be able to book the appointment on the calendar to your right. Select on the date and time that you'd like to surrender the title and then click on Submit. A pop-up will appear requiring you to confirm whether you want to set the appointment and then click on Yes. The invitation will then transition to the upcoming appointments tab. Click on the View button and you'll be able to generate a gate pass which will present at the gate when going to surrender the title. You also have the option of rescheduling if the date you previously selected is not convenient to you. You can choose the new date and time, then click Reschedule. For more information on ticketing and appointments in general, click on the featured link in the video description to view our tutorial on it. Once all the parties have signed and the original title has been surrendered, the Submit Request button will be active. Go ahead and click on it, and you'll get a confirmation message, Application Submitted Successfully. The application will then transition to the Ongoing tab. So navigate to the Ongoing tab and you'll see the application you have just submitted. Click on the View button, and you'll see the application has progressed to the Land Registration Department staff. At this point, both the advocate and the proprietor will get a confirmation message that the application has been submitted successfully. After the rectification application has been successfully approved, the progress bar will read 100%, and the Land Register will be updated accordingly. At this point, all the parties involved will be notified that the rectification application has been approved and the order of rectification of register from LRA 92 document will be available in the document tab in their respective RTSAS accounts. The parties will then be called to pick up the title after the changes have been implemented on it. That's it for this tutorial on the rectification of register application. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and click on the bell button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.